I love just this thing of, uh, you know, do we need a faction war again? Oh, Matt. Oh, Akalon is, he is getting the most out of his X blue. <sighs> oh my God, man. Red Nessie. All right, let's go. I struggle to make sense of the current WoW narrative. When we said we want back to Azeroth, surely that meant the old world with all the baggage that comes with that. Even if the factions aren't actively at war, there's always been tension, a sense of unease between the two. The narrative uh, team's decision to completely obliterate faction war in favor of building a long-lasting friendship is baffling. Last we heard, the Horde and Alliance were in a truce, but truce doesn't necessarily mean alliance. A truce simply means no fighting, at least for a bit. Completely out of nowhere, the truce turned into an alliance, and that feels alien to me. If this is what we were building towards and i don't uh, you know he doesn't he doesn't vibe uh what can uh, what can work is if the precursor sorry what can work is if this is the precursor to race neutral tensions where some big event establishes new ideological lines for two battle groups to emerge uh within that now we have a new faction war going but if the future friendship is just uh we're going to need far more powerful enemies to unite against sadly with Verinov uh walking over to friendship it would appear even that narrative is questionable tldr all happy no grit some of those old vibes good if what happens if all you do is become the super best friends to fight the big evil then the evil will need to get bigger and you'll need to add more people to the super best friends yeah uh well said for war to return to Warcraft, we would need to see very real, very compelling incident take place. One that erases all goodwill on both sides while simultaneously oh. restoring faction pride. Fucking burn a mirror cell down, let's go! The burning of a mirror cell! Let's all... Oh. Racial bonuses need to be removed. Make them flavor-based for our RP players with no impact in gameplay. Whew. Then we need a war with real consequences. Cities burn, heroes die. Yes, this will anger players, but if done right, it will simply motivate players to play more and engage more. We can't have uh, we can't have what WoW has been for decades, where the end is predictable and every player knows there's no real consequence. Uh, when outside threats are involved, there uh, cannot be truce or allies. We still need to fight. Uh, we uh, now only also fight some new enemy. Jaina, Thrall, Bane, Anduin appears um, you know appears to be the biggest threat to war returning with Kalia being a very huge question mark make it dark make wow matter again i that or raise factions introduce a new enemy an enemy faction for players to uh, you know unite against one that keeps the war uh, constantly alive i don't want to ever hear the words together and wow again see that's the thing blizzard it's like if you make all your stuff so saccharine and so forced and you know nos dormus is like look at camera talk about a bright future people will just become sick of it um so do I think we need a big, new, crazy, inciting, you know, violence inciting move? No, no. We need I the actually, opposite. We need the opposite. Yeah. Harms in the opposite. I think this is, I think this is the right idea in the wrong way. I think what we need to do is we need to return to the vanilla-like setting. And I'm not saying to make a classic. What I'm saying is, like, I mean, remember the voiceover to the WoW cinematic? that where you know things were good now there's a little bit of tension things are a bit neutral it's a big bad world it's a big world out there and within that world there are people who are friends there are people who are enemies yeah, uh, yeah. which which i suppose is to say natural tensions and this is um you know, so uh, Jared, who, of course, if you watch our podcasts, you will have seen actually lots of Jared. Um, but Jared, you know, from his uh, anthropological site, um, you know, a lot of uh, history and the history of philosophy in, in that man's head. We from got, Yeah, we got to talk about uh, Siberian shamanism in the shaman podcast. <laughs> that is peak Jared. Like, that yeah, really, that's cool. amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, like, one of the reasons I was excited for Battle for Azeroth is I was like, Yo, we we doing some Oppenheimer shit with Yo. this Azerite? Yo, we getting geopolitical? Yo. And, and then none of that happened. <sighs> Whereas, like, you know, whatever the war kind of bristled up a bit in Cataclysm? Mm. Oh, boy. Yeah, you, like, I've been playing through a little bit of that recently in the past couple months, and, like, just on and off when I get a couple minutes, leveling a shaman. And honestly, the um, the stuff in the barrens with the Horde around Camp Torio and stuff, or Tori, Joe, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Very, it's not executed the best, but the concepts are really good and stronger 
where you're actually like, hang on, what is what is the truth behind this? What's going on? Because there was both a case of, especially in the Horde side, there was a case of like that intra uh, faction chaos where some people were a bit more garrishy and some people were a bit less garrishy. And at the same time, there were... Um, 100% battery, so I yeah. will look at streaming my phone. And then the Alliance were doing... You know, it's like, well, how, how much did the Alliance do this? How much of the Horde are kind of fighting? And I definitely enjoy that a hell of a lot more. I enjoy a lot that a lot more now. Seeing battle lines been drawn, seeing lines been pushed, seeing Cataclysm was a little bit more on the how far are you willing to go for war sometimes, which I think in Warcraft terms can feel a little bit too preachy because you don't really feel the emotional uh, damage of someone bombing a village because it's usually you know something falls and then four seconds later some shitty fire appears and then there's like um, what do they call Gibbs a player in the place and you kind of laugh sometimes but at the same time it's like the tensions of characters can feel really real and whenever you get into the and like the the, the ideas of like loss and war and motivations and war and stuff are pretty good in World of Warcraft especially when it comes to like the grander schemes of peoples and things yeah like the we're losing our way of life because we're losing these like torn villages good oh hang on why was the the Torn Village was abandoned because they built a new orc stronghold and it's a big metal place just up the road. That's interesting. And that might be a little bit much at times, but you can tell some really good stories in there. There are real things that, that can be dealt with, with like... Do I go there or not? Do it. Coward. No, I probably shouldn't. It's no, don't. D don't. If it's recent, don't. Yeah, it's oh, it's, yeah, it's no. recent, but it's also interesting recent because um, obviously some of those in recent things that have been happening in the world, uh, quite a few people draw comparisons to the North Irish peace process and stuff. Um, but I suppose it's some like... Some crack that was. Some crack, yeah. Worked out mm -hmm. fantastic. I love our functioning government. So um, um, And our functioning people. To think about ways in which this could play out in WoW where it doesn't feel like a forced faction war and it feels natural. What you want is characters who are seeing who are critical of their own side wish for the best uh but you know for, for whatever reason the well-meaning people on both sides struggle to be at an accord um you know i've heard uh i was on one pretty good interview with um uh yuval noah harari whose books like uh, sapiens you may have read um obviously you know to uh contemporary uh, you know scenarios um you know him just talking about like you know right now one of the one of the things is the um you know the well-meaning people uh who you know are very critical of their own government uh who would be you know advocates of two-state solution or whatever he was talking about like you know the the pain the pain thing how do you get through the pain thing how can there be the pain thing. you know it's one of those things of like how can you get really you know the people who are perhaps on uh what could traditionally be seen as opposing sides of an issue, but really, you know, maybe might ex exemplify the the best or the most optimistic or whatever. It's hard to put them together in the real world. There's still going to be a lot of bristle, a lot of trouble. You think about, um, you know, then like different sides in Northern Ireland where, you know, you have had the well-meaning people on the loyalist side, the Republican side, and they, you know, while still somehow being well-meaning, might genuinely very much struggle to work with each other because in addition to, you know, them having their own personal perspectives, they're also thinking about their constituents, their teams, their own sets of scenarios, such that you can have, you know, a non-optimal outcome whenever, if you put those two people in a room and they didn't have to think about any other things in their life, they actually would probably, you know, maybe even be mates, who knows. And when I take this to something like World of Warcraft, and I know it might seem a bit weird talking about, you know, IRL history or whatever, but, like, what are, what's the function of stories? You know, uh, I'm not going to explain that here. Uh, but there's a reason why humans are interested in story and love story and love narrative and even, you know, find the narrative in things. Um, Apophenia. <laughs> so, take a character like Belmont. I think Belmont. Yeah, it's Belmont. The Forsaken Belmont. Yes, Deathstalker Belmont. Yeah, yeah he's, I mean, his title's Deathstalker. It's a bit cringe, but I mean, hey, it's also cool. Um, 
so he is definitely up his own people. He likes him. He is, you know, he is forsaken first. He definitely wants, uh, you know, them to have their well-carved-out place and to, to defend it, to make sure no bullshit's happening. And whenever those goddamn Scarlets come, he's going to kill the... He's just going to kill them, big time. Now, what happens when Gen and Co. Uh, want to go and build up Gilneas again? And they want to have a little bit of territory and a little bit of buffer room. Okay, are these factions literally at war in some big sense? As if, you know, the, the, the game master, you know, the dungeon master of this world has decided, and now you two are in war, play the campaign. Hmm. Well, what happens whenever these reasonable enough people that we can both understand and empathize just happen to be on two different sides of a situation with two different, uh, you know, they, they want different things. And it's like, this is the line in the map where our fucking interests meet. We want the line to be over here. You want this line to be back here. What do we do about this? Sometimes, you know, th this could be um, enhanced diplomacy with force and shenanigans uh, because it is World of Warcraft. But like, that's a good example of how you can have tension, grit, hardcore characters who do not mess around, but also not capital W war being mandated absolutely everywhere. Um, and in a way that ends up feeling really cringy and forced. Uh, other examples of this. You've got the Horde Council. They're going to have a lot of rebuilding and fixing up to do. Um, what if, what if the, you know, the Night Elves, they want to come get some of their lands back. Now, you're going to have a lot of Night Elves there who experienced uh, a hell of a lot of pain. So you could definitely have, you know, room for Night Elf Warhawks who will feel quite reasonable to players. Yeah. Who will be like, no, that land was ours. This, that land was ours, and then we were attacked by orcs, and then the world tree stuff happened, and then the orcs stayed. That, I spent time there as a child. I want that land back. And you, you can start to play out these historical disputes in a way that is not like, and then Anduin and Taronda went to Thrall and said, Thrall, you suck. It's time for a war. Because if you want the world to feel vast... You can have tensions going on at the borders, and Anduin maybe doesn't know shit about it, perhaps also isn't able to control it. Because, uh, you know, big settings that feel authentic are actually just so big that the king, you know, the king's not like, oh, you know, I'll just walk down there and solve the problem with good words because I'm a good boy. Yeah, I'd very much like to see faction peace be explored. Faction peace with tension. It in the, in the way that th there is no war happening. However, there is lots of war happening. It's just unsanctioned because of rebel, yeah. because of tiny rebel factions and small individual elements, because how much of a police force is there in World of Warcraft? You know, if, if a handful of the, uh, what do you call it? If a handful of night elves decide we're going to go and do some, um, we're going to do some fucking orcish crystal knack like see if we can't do that and then it's just a, a handful of night elf rogues and druids just go and do a load of murder in the dead of night oh i'm sure there's and a everyone, time they could bust that could cause a yeah, real fucking sticky situation yeah, and everyone turns around and goes well what do we do about that that's interesting hmm and then you know you've got your you, like and you could do this just in small quest lines where you feel them personally. It doesn't have do, not everything has to be. And then how does Taranda respond to that in the cutscene? It's sort of like and the quest is you help them because they like trick you into it, and then you realize, hang on, actually, I've just sparked racial tensions in this area really fucking bad. And what happens? Oh shit! What happens if a group of night elves actually splits? And because this is something you can do. Oh, no, I don't mean actually splits, but a group's just like, no, we don't respect your authority. Um, which, you know, people may think of this in terms of the, the, you know, a state as we see the notion of a state in the current day. Yeah, because what if you're just living in the fucking forest? Yeah, exactly. What is, what, what, what is whatever happens in Amir Drasil across the planet? Whatever does some fucking upper ass elf say? matter to you when you've been living in the forest for the past like 500 years or 10,000 years yeah like, an elf like um 
oh, there's, again, I, I don't want to say words that I know will just be picked up by the YouTube bot. Mm. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. Like, what happens if there are dissidents on the same side as people who want the political solution? Yeah. Doing dissonant things that, of course, could be relevant to modern day news, also is relevant to the country where we grew up, as an example. And I'm sure to many other people who, uh, you know, maybe live in countries that have, um, you know, had histories with, uh, you know, tension um, in them in that way, which I'm sure is most countries, uh, in fairness, because yeah. the world has been a, a funky old place. Yeah, I mean, here's an example. There's, uh, let's say, uh, will I go for orcs? Fuck it, let's go for orcs. A lot of orcs, and they are, for some reason, in human lands over by, like, Red Ridge River, and they're horde orcs, and they're some, some, some capacity down, like, STV or something like that, and there's a little bit of a horde uh, thing, and there's a bunch of humans being annoying, very annoying, very stealing, very taking bits of, you know, bits of their land, maybe being a bit aggressive, trying to push over, and the orcs are a bit of a disagreement, and maybe they're brothers. And one of them is trying to build a little small army to beat the shit out of the humans, kill them, and take the land over us. Because that's the, that's to them the right thing to do. But then the other brother's like, no, actually, I don't think that's the right thing to do at all because there's all these all these unpriced negative extra externalities. It could go horribly wrong. And are you fighting them off because you need it? Or do they need it? And you're actually just holding the land because it's a like a faction thing or a pride thing? Whereas, should they be allowed to have it? Because, you know, fuck it, whatever, we, we've got plenty. And all these different, like, uh, themes and opinions. And then you could have the the nice orc brother be killed. Because someone in the... He tries to stop someone in the group from hitting a human, he gets killed. And you've got a little bit of just a uh, reasonably emotionally heavy quest, but also comes with the aspect of exploring those themes and also murdering the shit out of each other. See, this is the thing. Modern short story, Matt... Need to start, like, mind-controlling people in the Blizzard office and just making quests. It's honestly, as soon as you get into the mindset of thinking about things in, like, those microwaves, it's extremely fucking awesome. I had, like, I had a friend explain, like, a, a setting he's been working on to me recently, and I was immediately sat there, like, I've got, like, 47 ideas immediately. Unbelievable fucking let's go. It's very good. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, like, you yeah. could... That's the thing with the quest. You can write really engaging short stories, basically. And you've got so many of the tools of the game to do so that the, with. And the that's best, what they have been doing. Yeah, like the best side quests. Are, the best quests in WoW are often the side quests, and those are the short stories. That, yeah. That's just what they are. Um, I, I suppose, yeah, I just think about, like, actually fleshing out, you know, what it means to live in this world with these factions instead of just kind of following the, you know, following the, the sort of big-name characters. Mm -hmm. Um which, uh, you know, it's like, ah, you know, the, the basically everything is driven by this council of people in Valdraken, and we just sort of stand there and look at them and then do things. Yeah. And uh, it all just feels a bit impersonal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think what's been really good about, I think actually, what this faction narrative stuff, do you know what I think that's really about? I think it's about the resolution of the story being like down to the level of the player and the player feeling immersed in the story because it's just them and, you know, one of the Orc brothers or it's mm -hmm. just them, the local alliance commander, you know, the local night elf commander and the situation that they're in. And that actually feels like a situation they can understand and empathize with. Um, it feels a little bit more boots in the ground, but I don't mean boots in the ground like, uh, you know, oh, it's a gritty thing. No, it feels like you're actually rooted in this world. Standing in it with your own two feet instead of being, you know, all fucking whistly, wavy, uh, you know, funny magic stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, like, yeah. Faction war, I'm going to say no. Vanilla style faction tension and no war, I'm going to say hell yes. Yeah, tension is a tension as a backdrop. And this almost goes back to what they were talking about with the, uh, like, humor and levity. Well... You know what also works as a pace break? It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be serious and funny. It can be serious and different serious. It can be serious and something else. It can be small scale. Okay, well, we're gonna go and do some questing and see what this like this this couple of Torn have like problems with local like this 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 couple Torn people have problems with what the local goblins are doing because the goblins are like maybe digging or drilling or mining or something and it's impacting their 
you know, impacting their, uh, maybe it's impinging in their beliefs in some capacity and there's like a religious versus a, like a capitalist kind of pushback there of stop, you know, stop digging up our ancestors, please. Um, it could be something like that going on and you kind of deal with that and that's interfaction tension. I think that's just a little bit of tension that could go across or it could, you could have dwarves or gnomes digging. And what, in, in, yeah. the, in the same way you did in Mulgore back in the day where dwarves were digging and obviously then you go, well, we have to kill hey, the shit out of them. As you well know to this day, I still want to know what the hell's going on. And Well, there's that, but also Bail Modan. I want to know, man. Um, I wasn't mm-hmm. supposed to have a uh, rhyme. And one of the amazing things about Warcraft as a setting is you get to explore this through, like you could tell the same story-ish so many different ways. If you think about all the factions, sub-factions, side-factions, regions of the world. Ah, I mean, it's like you think of Dunmoreau and, you know, you can immediately think of like 30 hours of game content that could take place there. Yep. Just because you, like, you know what it is. It's uh, Warcraft, I think, is great for being what, in my head, I sort of call a generative setting, which is a setting that has enough um, sort of dynamic elements and yeah. it has enough chaos that you can naturally just think about what would happen and have the stories come to you it's That's... one of the things that i really like about certain rpg settings especially uh, i think the setting of the expanse is really uh, the setting like big picture is really good for that and um, because like the worlds the the factions the mechanics of things they're all just so well uh, defined that if you can't have your your initial conditions, you can really like just think through what's going to happen, um, in a way where like it just feels very real. You know, it feels like a real good exploration instead of just like random shit that was thought up. Yeah, and that's and that's the problem. Fantasy can struggle with sometimes mm-hmm. fantasy and then sci-fi that goes so high that like you know it's just magic. Yeah, like that's the thing that obviously Blizzard were doing. That's what Blizzard were good at. That's what medicine was good at. That's what they set out to do. They didn't try to tell stories at the first... They Okay, well, they did try to tell stories, but the way they told stories was they built a setting and then told stories within that setting because that's the way they did it because they were a bunch of fucking RPG nerds. And then that's what they did with World of Warcraft because they knew they needed something that could... They knew they needed a world that could have a million stories in it. That's the first thing Matson did when he left Blizzard. Yeah, well, so... That, probably not the first thing, but yeah. you know, War Chief Gaming did, um, you know, did his source book. Yeah, so that's literally what they did with World of Warcraft. They built a world and they expanded the setting. And then after that setting got expanded, they were able to have quest designers tell hundreds, if not thousands, of stories within it. And then, obviously, that through general evolution of games and how things work, it became a little bit more centralized. And it became worse at telling all those different like uh, stories across the place. And then it became fi- uh, fixated on a bunch of smaller characters as opposed to a bunch of stories around the world. And even then, like Warlords was a good example of it having main characters, but it was also stories that were set across the across the entire place as opposed yeah. to being one big one big thing and like the last time i think we've explored a new setting properly outside of shadowlands because i wasn't exploring a new, i was exploring a new setting but i didn't quite feel the same as like miss Sabendaria was the last time i think the setting felt really super fleshed out in a way that we enjoyed because shadowlands setting was fleshed out it just wasn't very enjoyable in how it all came together with the existing it felt like a bad expansion to an rpg setting Whereas Mr. Mandaria was a good expansion in RPG setting of we've introduced a new land that is coherent and it doesn't interfere with your existing systems. Whereas Shadowlands did interfere with all the existing systems. But yes. <laughs>